the overly amorous bonobos to the prickly practices of porcupines. Here are 14 weird mating instincts. Welcome to Weird Wonders Wednesday. So before we start, we want to thank Billy Rash, and I hope I'm getting that name right, for suggesting this episode. Now, this would have been an awesome fit for Valentine's Day, but hey, better late than never, right? And we added a couple more for good measure. If you have any ideas for future episodes, let us know in the comments. And as always, thank you for the awesome subscriber support. Number 14, Tortoise. Now we found a story where an animal's mating instinct may have actually served to save a species. Diego is a reptile over 100 years old and is said to have fathered some 800 offspring. However, it turns out there's another tortoise at the Galapagos National Park who has fathered more than twice the offspring of Diego. The other fella, named E15, doesn't get the same recognition. Around 2,000 tortoises have been released back on the island of Espanola in the Galapagos Islands. 50 years ago, only 14 members of this giant tortoise subspecies were found there. So should E15 get more credit? If asked how elephants mate, one might be tempted to answer very carefully. Now, in fact, these huge beasts do not really display much in the way of courtship rituals. Elephant societies usually have a matriarch that oversees the herd, but roughly once a year, males will enter into a state of must when their testosterone levels increase and they become more aggressive. While males normally don't fight each other over females, their increased aggressiveness can result in destructive behavior. In 2014, for example, an elephant in a state of must went on a rampage in Thailand. The bull elephant trampled and killed his handler during a routine trek in the jungle, then ran off while two tourists were still aboard it. That beast was later discovered about two miles away from a resort south of Bangkok, where it was tranquilized and the tourists were rescued unharmed. red-capped mannequin. This bird is found throughout Central and South America, and it's gained some fame for doing a pretty dead-on Michael Jackson impression. When courting a female, the male will perform a type of moonwalk. It quickly shuffles back and forth across a tree branch in an effort to win over his intended. He'll also add some vocalizations like buzzers and snapping noises to better catch her attention. Those noises also serve to warn off prospective rivals. If the female is sufficiently impressed with the smooth moves, she'll agree to mate. Hooded seal. Some guys puff out their chest to impress the ladies, but the hooded seal impresses females by puffing out its nose. The males have a unique elastic nasal balloon, or nasal cavity, known as a hood that is located near the top of the head. During mating season, the reddish pink cavity can be inflated, resulting in a bizarre type of balloon that can be roughly the size of the seal's noggin. The critter will bounce the balloon-like appendage all about while producing various sounds and calls. The performance serves to establish the male's superiority and to attract a mite. Banana Fiddler Crabs Males of this species are recognized by the huge yellow claw, which is far more substantial than the minor one. The bigger claw inspired the Fiddler appellation. These crustaceans found from West Africa to the Indo-Pacific are also recognized for their devious courtship rituals. Males use the big claw to entice the females to enter the burrow or nesting pad. More often than not, the male takes the lead and the female follows him inside, providing she's interested. But the males in some species of this crab let the female male antifest, which does seem gentlemanly, until he follows her to trap her inside to increase his chances to mate. Did you know females can visit up to 20 males before making a choice? Honeybees. Did you know the queen bee selects from a group of male drones to mate with her? Now that's the good news. The bad news is the male's gonads will explode during the act, and that results in the queen becoming unable to mate with other drones. white-fronted parrot. Now this bird has a courtship behavior that involves some mouth-to-mouth -mouth or beak-to-beak -beak kissing. It sounds romantic, but when the male is sufficiently aroused, he will projectile vomit directly into the mouth of the female. Now she does accept the gift as a form of intimacy, which is kind of saying a mouthful. 
snow leopards. These big cats are native to the mountains of Central Asia, where only around 4,000 of the endangered animals remain. They're known for being shy and solitary, and males and females are usually only seen together during mating season, when they're said to mate up to 36 times a day. But unlike many lions and tigers, these critters have never been known to issue a mating call as such. That's because it was believed that the physiology of the throat made it impossible for them to roar. Instead, they're known to make a non-aggressive chuff sound. But footage captured from a video trap placed in the wild may debunk that old theory. A male snow leopard in the eastern Cyan Mountains of Siberia was observed and heard to let loose with a series of loud roars during a mating season, suggesting that love does indeed conquer all. Salamanders. The mating instinct can inspire some amazing feats of physical prowess. Just ask salamanders. While most of them are content to breed close to home, a study revealed that certain salamanders would walk up to nine miles to reach a breeding ground to mate, crossing treacherous terrain and exposing themselves to predators like raccoons and crows to do so. Researchers used a tiny treadmill to gauge the amphibian's endurance, and they found that some of the critters could walk for more than two miles without a break. That might not sound like much, except consider that would be like a human lightly jogging for around 75 miles before stopping. Experts still don't have a definitive answer for the strange ritual, although it is theorized that with few breeding sites available, the animals would have to traverse longer distances to find mates. Hippos. You'd expect a big critter like a hippo to have a big way of expressing its affection, and it does, and then some. As you might expect, a male hippo does not take the subtle approach when wooing a mate. After positioning himself where he cannot be missed, he empties his bowels and bladder, then proceeds to spinning his tail like a propeller to fling the filth and stench to the nostrils of his intended. The display also serves as a means to mark his territory. Anglerfish. The deep sea critters are recognized by the weird appendage that sprouts from its head which it uses to lure prey. These predators live on the ocean floors, where finding a mate can prove a challenge. Because scientists had never located a male anglerfish, it was unknown exactly how they reproduced, until it was noted that all females have a lump located on the bodies that appears like a parasite, but is actually the remnants of the male fish. Male anglerfish are born without digestive systems, meaning that once they hatch, they have to quickly find a mate. Once located, he bites the female, releasing an enzyme that fuses the couple together. Over time, the male will decay there until only a lump remains on the female. That lump will release sperm to fertilize the female's eggs when she's ready to spawn. Porcupines. Have you ever wondered how these critters manage to reproduce without killing themselves in the process? Well, these big rodents are broadly divided into two varieties, New World and Old World, and the two groups have different mating systems. The Old World animals are found from Europe to Southeast Asia and are among the few critters that are actually monogamous. Their New World counterparts found in North and South America are less conventional. During mating season, males will fight vicious battles over females. The victorious guy will then release a type of projectile that showers the female with his urine. The mating is accomplished when the female curves a tail over her back so her quills don't skewer the male as he briefly does his duty. Bonobos. Although they were once called the pygmy chimpanzee, bonobos are great apes found in the Democratic Republic of Congo and are among the closest existing relatives of humans. They're also considered among the most sexually promiscuous of animals, sometimes drawing comparisons to a freewheeling hippie commune. Researchers have found that our fellow primates do not engage in such activity for the sheer fun of it, though. Rather, it can fulfill several purposes, such as being used as a means of greeting or as a means of social bonding and as a way to resolve conflicts. Bonobos have also been observed to use sex as a way to relieve stress. Did you know that parental care in bonobo societies is assumed by the mother? That's because of the female's rampant promiscuity. The males can never be assured of which offspring is actually his. Praying Mantis 
These insects are legendary for practicing a form of sexual cannibalism, and it turns out the legend is well rooted in fact. Researchers have found that females don't bother waiting until after the mating act to have a snack. She'll often bite off a lover's head in the midst of procreation. The male's body will complete the act even when his noggin has been devoured. Now this is kind of a good news, bad news deal for the male. Yeah, he gets the girl, but there is a 16% chance that she'll have him for dinner, literally. Not the worst odds, but enough to make a bloke think twice.